Well, hello, boys and girls. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, as you know, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. What a coincidence. I have the same name as this show. Pretty cool, eh? Um, okay, I'm going to be doing a breakout player from every team in the NHL. Let me know in the comment section if you agree or if you have some other ones that you like from each one. I like doing this time of year, seeing who's going to be the one that breaks out finally. You know, I love that. And we love rooting for those guys, right? So that's what I'm going to do. And it's all part of the Steel Flyers All Sports Network, www.steelflyers.com. You can also see me tonight at 7.30 to 9.30 Eastern. Tonight is, what is today? I know. When I'm doing this, August 10th, 7.30 to 9.30 Eastern on the NHL Pearl of Wisdom show. Totally interactive. You can go over there and tell me whatever you want. Whatever you want to talk about, it's all yours, man. We talk about fun stuff there. I'll tell you that right now. Frolic? Woo! Frolic is like that. That's Perlo dance, by the way, if you don't know. I don't know how you don't. It's all over the land now. Okay, let's get to it. We got lots to get into. All right, Tampa Bay Lightning. We're starting from less cap space to down, just because I like doing it that way. Uh, whoops, I got to make sure you guys can see it too, right? There we go. Okay, Tampa Bay Lightning. We are going to go with Anthony Sorelli. Uh, had a, this is kind of a rebound year and a breakout year all at the same time for Anthony Sorelli. Uh, he's from where I uh, he's from where I was born actually. I was born in Etobicoke, Ontario. Twenty four years old. That's usually the breakout year for players. Um, he's put up some good points already. Forty four points, thirty nine points. But as you can see, this is going to be his big year where I think he gets his biggest chance. They've uh, they they Johnson isn't going to be there clipping out his heels. It's all Sorelli. This year, and I love the guy. Who doesn't love the guy? Tell me in the comment section. Sorelli, the guy's engine doesn't stop running, man. He's uh, he's not the biggest guy in the world, six feet, but he plays a lot bigger. I love him. I think he's going to have a massive year. I'm going to say he had 22 points last year. I'm going to say he puts up 65 points this year. That's what I'm going to say. Can you guys see that all right? Yes, you can. Okay, next. Uh, by the way, there was a few other ones there that you could put. Matthew Joseph was another guy I was considering. Uh, I think he's going to have a good year as well. Stars. What's going on? No, that's next. The Dallas Stars. I, I had some interesting ones here. Kibaranta could have a chance, but either playing him lower in the lineup. Ropo Hints, I think, will probably have a good year, but he did have 43 points in 41 games last year. Do I think he's going to crush it even more than that? Yeah, I think he's capable, but I'm not really putting him in that. I think if he can be a point-of-game center, that's probably what he is. What I'm looking at here, and you're, a lot of people are going to say, what? Me, it's Miro Hiskinen. He is legendary already for a lot for his offense and what he's done, but he really hasn't put up huge numbers. And <clears throat> you know what? It even surprised me that he hasn't put up much more than you know half point a uh, half a point a game. This is the year, baby. But uh, he had twenty six points in twenty seven games in the playoffs, though that was huge. A little bit of a down year last year and a COVID year. I think he's. All, I think he's all over it this year. I think uh, he's skinning. I'm going to say, how old is he? He is 22, I believe. 20, going into his 23 year, uh, year age of 23, been in a couple years. I'm going to go off here and say he gets 70 points. 70 points for he's skinning this year. Norris Trophy candidate. Big year, big breakout year for he's skinning. Next. Edmonton Oilers. Uh, a couple here that you can look at 
as well. Kaylor Yamamoto would be huge if he had a big breakout year this year at 22 years old. Almost took him. Uh, but um, I, and, and then there's uh, Bouchard, but can't really call Evan Bouchard on defense a breakout year since he hasn't had his first good year, decent year. It's kind of his rookie year. Um, I wonder, is he still eligible for rookie of the year? Because if he is, I'd put him up there as a possibility. Jesse Puglia Harvey. I think he, he came back last year uh, for his first year after a little bit of maturity things that he went back to Europe and came back. Um, looked really good most of the year. Very good defensively, by the way. And I think he puts it together this year. I'm going to say that Puglia Harvey has a 50-point season, 25 goals, 25, or sorry, 28 goals, about 24 assists. I think he's going to have somewhere around a 50-point season this year. And uh, that would be a breakout year for him. Big boy, too. Love that Puglia Harvey. Edmonton Oilers fans, who do you think? What do you got, another one besides Puglia Harvey, or is it more on Yamamoto? Uh, let me know there in the comments section. Next. Montreal Canadiens. I got. I just got to. I can't go with anybody else but Nick Suzuki. The, the guy's a magician. He should be called the magician. The guy does incredible things with the puck. And you could say, wow, he's already got a point a game, almost a point a game last year. Isn't that a breakout year? Yes, I guess. But I'm even saying more, baby. More for Suzuki. <laughs> I think Suzuki's over a point a game this year. He just gets better and better and better. I love him. What do you guys think? Who else would we put in there? Uh, Cole Caulfield. Uh, is that a breakout year? It would be his first real year. Oh, my gosh, I forgot. Would that be his rookie year? Oh, forget about it. Cole Caulfield all day for rookie of the year. But I can't really give him that. Cole Kinyami could have a big year. Again, uh, that could be a breakout year for him. Uh, Alexander Romanov played a lot of games last year. I think at 21, maybe expectations are a little high for Romanov. He could be it, but I'm going with the musician, Suzuki. Next, Chicago Blackhawks. And uh, I'm going with a different one here. There's a few guys. Alexander Nylander was injured all year last year. Uh, he's pri He's got the talent to have a breakout year anytime, anytime here. Uh, Kubalik, you can kind of say that he already kind of had a breakout year. I'm not sure he's going to be much better than he, what we've seen so far. And of course, Kirby Doc. But Kirby Doc, has, I don't really know if he's played enough that you can call it a breakout year. I'm going a little different here because mainly it's just because it's a guy I really like. And it's Kalniuk from, uh, where the heck is he? Right here. Wyatt Kalniuk. Now, you're going to get in trouble for this one because it's actually kind of a rookie year for him as well. But he is 24 years old. I just think he's going to have such a good year this year. The way he's progressed in, uh, in uh, college and how much he's grown and become such a great player right away. Like, he looked fantastic in the second half last year. I think it's possible he takes ice time from DeHaan this year. I really love the guy. I'm going to go with Cal Nyuk. Tell me who you think. I think a lot of people will say Doc, and I don't blame you. That's a good choice. I love Doc, too. Beast. Beast, man. I think Doc is one of the main reasons why... Well, first of all, Kalniak is why they, I think a lot of the reason why they went with uh, Boquist for the Jones trade, because they had him here and they believe he's going to be close to as good. I'm not so sure about that, but I think he's going to be very, very good. Um, and then Doc, I think that's, Doc has given them like the green light to say, we're not really rebuilding anymore. He's fantastic. He's a beast. Love him. Uh Toronto, I got a different one here too, although they don't really have much where you could say breakout. Um, Rasmus Sandin would be the closest, but again, it's sort of a rookie 21-year-old defenseman, hasn't really played all that much to call it really a breakout. But I suppose you could if you thought he was going to crush it, crush it. I don't. I think Sandin's been moving up little increments at a time, and I think he'll probably play more this year. 
but I don't see him going like right off. I do see him being a very, very, very good defenseman in the NHL though. Um, most of the reason for that is you have Riley and Muzzin here. He's got to take those two spots and I don't see that happening. I'm going with Michael Bunting, believe it or not. Uh, he, he had a good year in Arizona. Uh, he, he's, he's improved leaps and bounds the last couple of years. And I think he might get a chance on that top line with, with, uh, Matthews and Marner. Um, I think they might give him a chance. He's not a big guy at 5'11", but he's almost 200 pounds. He's got low center of gravity. When I was watching Arizona last year, I was like, who is this guy? This guy's freaking awesome. Let me tell you, Toronto fans, you're going to love him. Oh, and he's from Toronto, by the way. Pretty cool. Um, yeah, I think he's going to have a big year next year. And you could really call that a breakout year because – um, his points, I should have went points. I forgot to do points for my last ones. Oh, well, I'll do points for this one. I think he could pull out 40 to 45 points, maybe even more. Um, I think he, very big surprise. I think he could be a very big surprise in Toronto. Next, we have Vegas Golden Knights. And I'm going to go with, there's not too many things to choose from here. Um, I'm hoping, really, really, really hoping for the sake of uh, a guy who has had really a rough time in the NHL that Nolan Patrick, who they got from Philadelphia in a, in the Ellis trade where Philadelphia got an Ellis trade, they did a three-way deal to get him. Um, I hope he does really well here because he's had a heck of a time so far. But honestly, I'm going with Nicholas Hag. Nicholas Hag, 22 years old. They've been he played 52 games and got 17 points last year. He's not really the hugest point producer, but I think he's going to play a almost a full 82 next year and get 25 to 30 points. I think it's very possible. I could see him taking out McNabb, taking minutes from McNabb here. McNabb going down here and Hag going up here. There wasn't really all that much to choose from here. The only other one I would have thought of is in goal, Laurent Bassois. If Laner gets injured, watch out. He played very good in Winnipeg, backing up Hollabuck when given an opportunity. But I'm going with Nicholas Hag. Tell me what you think in the comment section there, Vegas fans. Next, Pittsburgh Penguins. Not much. <laughs> they don't have breakout players because they usually don't have many young players. Um, most of them have already broken out already. Uh, I would have to go though. I'm going to say Brock McGinn getting the opportunity to come over Carolina where he was a little bit buried, uh, in a very deep lineup. I think he could do some damage on Jason Zucker here and take that spot playing alongside a Malkin. He plays a thick, big game. He is... Uh, he's the kind of guy that would be really well. I know he's only six feet, but he plays a lot bigger than that. And um, he, he just plays the type of game I think would complement Malkin very well. And uh, Jason Zucker, to me, has not been all that impressive the last couple of years. So I'm going to say Brock McGinn gets an opportunity. Pittsburgh fans, tell me down there in the comment section what you think about that. All right. Next. Washington Capitals, uh, again, older team. Not many breakout players. Um, there are some rookies coming up that we're waiting for. And Connor McMichael um, might be able to make it on the lineup this year. I would say it's pretty likely he gets an opportunity to do that. But I am going to go with Daniel Sprong. Daniel Sprong has been a slow burn in development. Came from the Pittsburgh organization, was... Uh, first round pick, I want to say 24th. Let's see if I'm right. Oh, no, he was second round pick. Oops, <laughs> 46. Close. I had numbers. Um, yeah, anyways, he has taken a while to develop, but he had a great year last year for Washington. And I just think he's going to keep on doing that. Um, he's, it feels like he's put it together here. 42 games, he had 20 points. He's going to get a lot of opportunity. Washington's trying to get younger. And I think he's going to get more opportunity to play in offensive situations. I'm going to say he pulls about 
46 points in 82 games, which isn't too shabby for a guy who's building up there 24 years old. Uh, the other one is that I think a lot of people are going to talk about here is Mantha, uh, that he'll have a breakout year because he really hasn't had a breakout year in his career. Detroit kind of gave up on him in a bit, but I don't think he's ever going to be it. I don't. So that's why I didn't pick him. Okay, Washington fans, tell me what you think. Maybe Ilya Samsonov, who got a show us contract at $2 million. That's a possibility. I'm not a Samsonov guy yet. I'm not. Uh, I, I think they should have went for a much better goaltender anyways. We'll get into that some other time. You can watch my other videos. I talk about it. Now, uh, here's a big one. Boston Bruins. Who did I take for the Bruins, by the way? I took. I think I skipped him. Okay. Oh, no. It was Matt Grizzly. No, sorry. It's uh, Forbert. Forbert. Derek Forbert. Left defenseman. Big boy. This guy has been getting better every single year he's played in the NHL. I don't know if there's any guy that's worked harder at be, being at his craft than Derek Forbert in the league. Literally, he has never had a year where he has been worse from the year before. It's consistently getting better. I think this was a really shrewd, shrewd signing by Boston. And actually, I was reading something the, uh, on something the other day that they are planning on put it, playing him possibly with McAvoy. And uh, I'm, I'm really going to enjoy watching what he does there if he does play with McAvoy. At the very least, I could see him taking quite a few minutes from Mike Riley. Carlo and Forbert, I would not want to get in the defensive zone with those two. <laughs> I'll tell you that right now. Uh, that would be insane. Great shutdown pairing there. Um, but we'll see. I think he's going to play with McAvoy, though. And that would be huge for him. The other one, of course, and you can't really, I don't know, can you call it a breakout? Jeremy Swayman, actually, or Linus Allmark, either one. I say Linus Allmark's breakout year was last year, but nobody noticed because Buffalo was so bad. He was fantastic last year. Jeremy Swayman is a really a breakout, but, I mean, if he shows what he did last year and he can do it on a consistent basis, the kid's insane, man. So if you said either one of those, I'm not not on your side. That's for sure. Uh, next, we have the Blues. And we have Tom, I, I've got Robert Thomas. Not much to choose from here. Um, one I almost took because Vladimir Tarasenko is going to be traded and he's going to be playing in uh, in uh, Tarasenko's spot is Pavel Buknevich. But I don't think he's going to get much more points than he already did, even playing with O'Reilly and in the system that St. Louis had. Robert Thomas has been somebody they, that St. Louis has been touting for a long time, and he now gets his opportunity to play with Shen and Perron. Um, and I'm going to say he breaks out. I'm going, to, I'm going to go with him breaking out this year. Uh, let's look at what, what's his best year been. So far, he's just been on the cusp. He had 42 points in 66 games in St. Louis uh, in 2020. A little bit of a down year. I'm going to say he plays, you know, 75 games and gets 57 points, 55 to 57 points, something like that. That would be a breakout year still for him. It's his his best year so far. St. Louis is an older team, and there's there's guy. It's a little difficult to pick. Uh, who he would. I would. I really love Zach Sanford if he ever got the opportunity to play up the lineup. But they ended up signing Brendan Saad, and uh, that took his spot, and they're just going to keep on playing him there on the third line. So I couldn't take him for that reason. Next, Colorado Avalanche, and I think this was going to raise some eyebrows. Breakout year, Kale McCarr. And you're going to be like, well, you have 44 points in 44 games. Is that not a breakout year? For most people. But for a superstar like Kale McCarr, no. 
<laughs> I think Kale McCarr is just going to do stupid things next year. I think I think he's going to win the Norris next year as long as he stays healthy. The guy is just a m- magical guy to watch on the ice. And I'm going to say <clears throat> 75 games, 86 points. I think maybe even 90. Big, big, big. So one of the best, biggest offensive years of a defenseman in this generation coming from the car. Super. So is that a breakout? I guess you could say. Watch out for Bowen Byram. He's a beast. More on the defensive side of the game, but it's going to be fantastic. This whole lineup is crazy. Yost could be there. New hook. I mean, I don't think he's going to have a breakout breakout, but... Nuchushkin could be there, but I'm still going with Makar. Tell me, Colorado fans, what do you think? What's next? Uh, Kings. Okay, this one's kind of tough because you got a couple players coming up in Byfield and Turcotte that could just go off. But I'm not really going to call that a breakout right now. I think... Gabriel Velarde is going to end up playing the wing. I think he's a better winger than he is a centerman. And they got Turcotte and Byfield. One of those should probably play here, I'm thinking. Could be wrong, but I think one of them will make the lineup. And if they do, you can't play Velarde down on the fourth line. He looked awesome on the on the left side. I think he takes Adrian Kemp's spot. And uh, I love the guy. He's big. He's strong. He goes to the net hard. He plays the right way. Um, had 23 points in 54 games last year. I'm going to say he puts up uh, 50, just over 50 points in 80 games, somewhere around there. It's a decent breakout year. I could actually see him doing much better than that. That's pretty conservative. Uh, I love the LA team coming on next year, by the way. San Jose Sharks. Um not really many breakout guys here. Uh, Rudolph Balsers is probably going to get a really good opportunity. I'm not sure his offense is much more than he showed last year, though. Um, you could make a case for Thomas Hurdle, who had a down last year, but he's 27. He probably is what he is now, about a point of game guy. And then Timu Meyer uh, had a down year as well. He could break out, but I'm going a little off the board here. I'm going to say Nabokov, the goalie coach for the San Jose Sharks, is considered a goalie whisperer. And I think he took an eye to Aiden Hill and thought he could turn him into something amazing. So I'm going to go off the board here a little bit and say Aiden Hill has a huge year there for San Jose. Um, He's 2.75 and .913 in Arizona was okay. They played very defensively. I think he's going to do about a 2.40 and about a 9.17, something like that, which is good numbers, especially on a team in San Jose, which whose defense is eh, a little on the iffy side. So I'm going to take Hill there as the uh, breakout player. Now, what do we got? Uh, Flyers. You could say Farabee. I love Farabee. Probably will be Farabee. But the fact of the matter is, is it all don't matter unless it's Carter Hart. It's got to be Carter Hart. Carter Hart, you could say it's a, maybe it's a rebound year. Uh, he had a 2.42 in 43 games and 9.14. They, Carter Hart in this, he's got the talent to put up Vesna-like numbers. And I'm going to say he does it. I'm going to say they believed in him with the $4 million contract that three years for $4 million. They didn't do what Washington did and did a show me contract. They went three years, $4 million, which tells me there's something that's going on there that, that make them believe that he's doing the things he needs to do to become better. Uh, AV, I believe last year, uh, Alan Vigno, the coach, said that he needs to work harder, which means might have been conditioning issues. So if he's putting in the time and doing that, and I imagine he must, or they're not going to give him three years, four million. I'll tell you that right now, not after the year he had the year before. So I'm going to go with Carter Hart. Jets, 
Uh, again, a tough one. Older group. Um, breakout year. Kind of, Andrew Kopp kind of had his last year. Uh, Pionk's already had his. Joshua Morrissey probably is what he is at this time. So I'm going to go with another one you can say had a breakout year, but I think it has more of a breakout yet to go, and that's Nikolai Ehlers. I freaking love this guy. It's a tie, actually. Kyle Connor could be a 50-goal scorer next year. That guy shot off the wing is like, what? Crazy, man. And Nikolai Ehlers, ever since after Lionel left, it's like he said, yes, baby! <laughs> and he went freaking crazy. So I'm leaning Ehlers here. He's a little bit older. I'm going to say he gets, I'm going to say he puts up a 90-point season next year. <laughs> that would be cool, right? 90 point season. Tell me what you think, Jets fans. Did you find is there somebody else there that is a breakout guy to you? Uh come or just have a little debate over Connor and Ehlers if you want. That'd be fun. Next. Okay. We have the Florida Panthers. We have the big breakout Carter Verhege. You can't really call him a breakout, that's for sure. Um, you could say Anton Landell has a crushing rookie season, and that could very well be the case. The guy is so intelligent. He, watch when you, he's one of the most intelligent players you're ever going to see. Kind of like in the Bergeron type level of intelligence in the way he plays. Um, however, I can't really call that a breakout year. Um, so at, at Mackenzie Weger kind of had his last year. I'm going with a guy who you could say already kind of has had it with 25 goals and 40 points, Sam Reinhardt. I think Sam Reinhardt is going to crush next year. Um, I kind of hope they play him in the middle. When they put him in the middle in Buffalo in the second half last year, Granado, the coach there, he showed a first-shot centerman type uh, player that you cannot find too often. First shot centermen are hard to find and extremely valuable. I think Sam Reinhardt pots 35 next year, maybe even 40. 40 goals, 80, 85 points. I think he's going to have a beast of a year, which would be pretty breakout-ish. Let's look at what he's done so far in his career. Most One of the most underrated players in the NHL. What a great pickup by that team. Yeah, he's never had a point a game. So I'm going to say he goes off, has over a point a game next year. Reinhardt, watch it. Okay, Florida Pants, tell me if you say see somebody different. Next. Arizona. What are you going to say about Arizona? Um, <clears throat> I had a hard time picking one here. Barrett Heighton should be, but he hasn't looked good. Honestly, he just hasn't looked good so far. He's only 21. Um, they weren't patient enough with him. I hope it didn't ruin him. Um, Clayton Keller, I suppose, but he has nobody to play with, especially if they dra if they trade Phil Kessel. I, I can't see that. I'm going to go with – I was going to go with Shane Goss to Spear, given the opportunity. However, I, something in me tells me it's not going to happen for him there either. I'm going to go with Dimitri Yaskin. I uh, went to the KHL last year. They picked him up from the KHL. He plays the type of game where he doesn't really need to use other players to get points, but he hasn't been able to do it in the NHL so far. He's, he tried a few times with St. Louis. Uh, yeah, see, 18 points, 13 goals. I'll tell you why, because he's kind of a puck hog. But in Arizona, they might not even care. They might just say, let him go. Uh, and it looks like he had... He had 38 goals. He's got a killer shot. He's not very good defensively, but in Arizona, I don't think they care either. They just need a guy that can pot some goals to bring some fans in there. And I'm going to say that he does pretty well this year uh, for Arizona because he's he, all no pressure. Just go out there and try to score. Uh, I'll say he gets 20 some, 25 goals, 20 some goals, somewhere around there, maybe 20. 24 goals and 35, 36 points. That doesn't sound like much, does it? But it would be a breakout for his career 
And I can't do Jacob Chikrin because his breakout was last year. I don't think his point production is going to be better this year since he has nobody to pass to. So I'm going with him. Too bad for Jacob Chikrin, by the way. His young career is getting wasted in that organization. Brutal. Okay, next. Rangers. Oh, easy all day. I, I mean, it's not easy, but it is easy at the same time. Could be Kako. They got so many guys. Vitaly Kratsov, he could have a big year next year. All of that. But Alexis Lafreniere in the second half last year was freaking awesome. And he's just going to be better. I think he takes Kreider's spot on that second line. I think Kreider comes down into the third here. Um, I think Lafreniere is going to be a beast. Uh, I, you could say K. Andre Miller. He had a great year last year. I'm sure his numbers will be better as well. Ryan Lindgren, every year he just gets better and better as well. This team is stacked. Stacked, buddy. But I'm going to say Alexis Lafreniere. Uh, Seattle. Woo, Seattle. Um, shouldn't be exciting, isn't it? Having watching the new team with all their new players and all that, uh, I, I I'm going with a guy that's not here right now, because he's injured. I think Yanni Gord, given the opportunity to be a number one, is going to put up a good 50 points. Uh, he's he was buried in uh, he was buried in in Tampa, and he played a, an awesome a great role for them. And got pretty good points considering he wasn't giving a lot of opportunity to produce. Oh, wait, he had a 64-point season already. I don't know if I can call that a breakout. It would have to be kind of a rebound. I forgot about that. He had a 64-point season. Anyways, I can see that again. So kind of a breakout because he's going back to where he was before. I didn't notice that. I should have looked a little better before I did this. But if not... Watch out for Mason Appleton. Put up 25 points in 56 games in Winnipeg. And I kept on saying, why aren't they playing this guy higher? He looks like he has a lot of untapped offense. So I'm going to change it, actually, because I didn't notice that about Gord. I'm going to say Mason Appleton has his breakout year this year. And for him, a breakout year would be 35 to 40 points. Uh, maybe 45 points, somewhere like that. If you can have a 45-point year, I would, I would call that a breakout year. Besides that, also you can look at Jonas Donskoy, but I, I just think that Donskoy has put up, the numbers he put up there is what he's going to put up. I don't even know if he'll be able to put that much up because he doesn't have as good of players to play with as he did in Colorado. So my guess, I'm going with, Mason Appleton, tell me what you think, Seattle. What do you got? Um, Jared McCann is a possible. Talk to me. Talk to me. Columbus Blue Jackets may be struggling this year. A little bit difficult here to pick one as well. Um, but I'm going to go with the guy they picked up from Chicago, and I already talked about it when I was talking about Chicago. Adam Boquist, 20 years old, had 16 points in 35 games last year playing down in Chicago's lineup. He kept on being forcing the coach to play him higher and play more minutes all the time. In Columbus, he just has Andrew Peake and Dean Kukan to beat. I think he's going to do it. I think he's going to play huge. I think he's going to get about 30 to 30 points, 35 points in 80 games, which would be a breakout year for him. And play fantastic defense. I think he's really good. I, I think it's possible he could be almost as good as Jones, maybe better. Because Jones is, I mean, we're going to, we'll see what Jones is now that he's in Chicago. Uh, it's been rough two or three years for Jones there in Columbus. Um, I don't know if that's what he is or not. We'll find out in Chicago. But I do know what Adam Boquist is. Great two way defenseman. I think he's going to be in that number two spot with Wierenski for a long time. Time and you're going to love them, Columbus Blue Jackets fan. Pick who you may take uh, as the breakout player for you out there, Columbus Blue Jackets fans. Next, Flames. Not too many to pick here. Um, Blake Coleman already kind of had his. Uh, everybody kind of had theirs. I, 
almost leaning Matthew Kachuk here because I know Matthew Kachuk can put more points than that, but he's actually been sort of declining offensively. Now, part of the reason for that is he's had to do so many other things. See, 77, 61, 43. Do I think he's going to get more than 77 points and 34 goals? Probably not. So I can't really call that a breakout year. I'm going to go to the defense here and take Yusuf Balamaki, who had a bit of a down year last year, but by all accounts was uh, drafted 16 overall in the first round in 2017. And he has all the freaking tools, man. He has all the tools to be a top four defenseman, and he's got the opportunity to do it this year. Never going to put up huge offensive numbers, I don't think. Uh, maybe get 20, 25, something like that. But a shutdown, smart, intelligent uh, defenseman, big 6'2", 212, going to get his opportunity there. If he crushes it as much as his talent allows, is able to, if he's really able to process the the NHL game this year, I could see him taking out Noah Hannafin for that spot. So, should be cool to watch. Uh, tell me what you think, Calgary fans. Where, who do you, who's your breakout player there? Uh, Islanders, all Wallstrom all day. Watch Wallstrom go this year. I think he's into. The, he's really filled into his body here at 21 years old. Um, he's worked hard to become an NHLer. He didn't really come in naturally after getting drafted. He's had to work for every bit that he has. He's had to get his body up to, to snuff at 211-62. I think Wallstrom has a big year this year. Big year. I'm going to say yeah, 48 points and 22 goals for Wallstrom this year. And I could that's conservative. He's got the talent to be... Uh, like a 30-goal scorer for sure. He could be a 30-goal scorer. He could do it this year. wouldn't surprise me. Really love the guy. Uh, also, their lineup is pretty old. Then Noah Dobson, though. Noah Dobson. Almost got to give it a tie because Noah Dobson, Dobson's going to get a great opportunity this year. I could see him taking Scott Mayfield. What do you guys think, Dobson or Wallstrom? Who's your pick, Islanders fans? Uh, next. Carolina, I believe it is. Yes. Carolina. I got a tie. I can't decide. No, I can't. It's Andre Svechnikov. But I just loved Nietzsche so much, I kind of had him as a tie. I know he got 41 points last year, but I think he can even do better than that in 53 games. I think he'd be a point-of-game guy. I His game is so awesome. And not only that, great defensively. Andre Svechnikov has been working on his defense – and he's been doing very well at it. I think he gets over a point a game next year. I think, and his shot just can't be held back any longer. Um, it's too good. It's too good. Uh, I think he's going to get 30, 33 goals, 84 points. 33 goals, 84 points. He has the ability to do a lot more than that. He has the ability to be a 90 point player, I believe. So. He could do that. Could do that now. But at 21 age, if he were to do that, he's going to do a lot more than that. Uh, he has the ability to be a 100-point player, really. He, he's a beast. Maybe a 50-goal scorer in this league. Love him. Tell me what you guys think. Carolina fans, Svechnikov, breakout year, or Nietzsche's, or somebody else. You got somebody else in there you might like instead. There's um, I almost went with Ethan Bear. Because I saw him, he's much better than the Oilers fans are telling you he is. I'll tell you that right now. And I am an Oilers fan. So, next, New Jersey Devils. Uh, not going to go off the board too much here. I think Jack Hughes is going to do it this year. I think he's going to be in the 70 to 70 point range, the most points of his career. Um, physically should be up there in the 190 area, 185. Weight wise this year, he's put on the, he's going to put on the weight. I love his skating. He's, is it just me? He's one of the most beautiful skaters in the league. Don't you think? Like I, he doesn't get enough credit the way he can swarm around. 
He kind of, rem- I think he's better than Barzal that way, to tell you the honest truth. I think this is a year he breaks it open. Um, he's been doing it with rookies flank to the side of him, too. The points he's putting up, a lot of people don't realize that. But, I mean, you could take Kalkinen, you could take Sharon Govich. You could take Pavel Zaka, who kind of had a breakout year last year, but his offense still could improve. Um, and you could take Nico Heischer. Like, there is so much talent on this New Jersey lineup that, uh, it's hard to pick one, but I am going with Jack Hughes. Tell me what you guys think, New Jersey Devils fans. Canucks, Peterson. I'm taking Peterson. Uh, 100 point. He's going to have 100 points in his career, in his 100 point season in his career, at least one. Um, had a rough year. Was a point game, a point a game before that. I, 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 in an 82 game, coming back strong after a COVID season like that. I think he's going to crush it. 50 goals. 50 goals at the age of 23 for Elias Pettersson. Listen to that. Uh, but you can make a case for a lot of guys on here um, as well. Nils Hogland could have a huge year this year as well. I He's looking really good. I think he's going to play a little too low down in the lineup to, how, to accomplish that. Um, but... Could be, but I'm going to say Elias Peterson, even though he had a point of game already in his career, I think he's even going to best that. Next, Ducks. Uh, I got Zegers, but is it really a breakout? It's kind of his rookie year. He probably will, he probably will be rookie of the year this year, so I had a difficult time really picking. Um, I like Isaac Lundestrom, but I'm not sure where his offense is going to be after it's all said and done. I think he's a strong defensive guy that puts up like 35 points, much like a guy they already have in, uh, uh, where is he? Se- not Severson. Silverberg. Where is he? Is he injured? Must be injured. Ah, yeah. Jacob Silverberg. Um, I almost went with Lundstrom. Jones and Steele look like they've become what they're going to become. They could break out, though. A lot, a lot more offense was thought that, to come out of them yet, so it's possible they could do it. And I like Alexander Volkov a lot. But I'm going to stick with Zegers just because it's a breakout year because his point production could be in the 50, 55-point range. And for a center playing 20 years old, that's breakout-ish just – for this team, I think that's who I have to go with. I think that's really what it's all about. And you could say Jamie Drysdale, too. Tell me what you guys think. Zegers, Drysdale, Anaheim Ducks fans. Tell me in the comment section what you got there. Uh, Preds. I'm going to go with Myers. Philip Myers that they picked up from Philadelphia. Uh, Tanner Janot kind of possibility as well. There's not many young guys in this lineup, and Eli Toivonen would be another one. Tough one between the two. Um, Toivonen, is, he's got to get into the areas where he can be more effective. If he does, Toivonen's the guy here. If he can do that this year, Toivonen is the guy. Um, but I'm saying Myers simply because Nashville has been so good at quickly produce, uh, helping defensemen produce and become good right away. They're very, very good at it. Alexander Carrier, um, you know, like they always just def- – defensemen do well in Nashville. And uh, Philip Myers had a pretty good year last year already, but he has the ability to be a serious shutdown defenseman. So I'm taking Philip Myers, but I'm kind of – I might kind of wish I took L.A. Toivon in when it's all said and done. Tell me what you guys think, Nashville. You got anybody else out there that you might want to put in that spot? Minnesota Greenway. Jordan Greenway, I think, is going to be – this is the year. I mean, last year was good. He gets better every year. I'm going to say 60 points this year for Jordan Greenway, which would be a breakout year for him. Um, not much else to choose from because Kaprizov had an amazing year. You could take Kaprizov to just go off and get higher too. No reason that that wouldn't happen. I think I just like Greenway a lot. 
think that's what it's all about, to tell you the honest truth. Um, you could say Capo Kakinen, too, would be another one. I uh, take Cam Talbot's spot. But I don't, I don't know. I'm on the fence about Kakinen. Are you? Are you there, uh, fans out there in the land of Minnesota? Are you kind of on the fence about Kakinen? Or do you think he's going to beast it up this year? Tell me in the comment section what you think. Uh, wings. Um, I got I, I got Heronic, who you could say has already had it, but I just he just gets better and better, and he's so underrated. I just want to mention his name. He's one of the best de defensemen that doesn't get talked about out there. And I think he has more offense in him, and you're going to see it more this year. He's hitting that 24 spot, a 24 year old spot, and uh, he has been quietly been getting better and better for several years now. And I think he's going to really nail it this year. Working with Letty, the only problem is is they're going to play him with Letty, and he might not get the point production because Letty will be playing. Letty is not that great defensively, and now Heronic's going to have to play with a guy who's not that great defensively. But Letty can help him with his offense. The other guy is Zadina. Philip Zadina had a kind of had a, a year last year that looked a lot better, and he could really make a big jump here. Uh, adds about if he adds another ten pounds onto his frame, he looked much better. I could see. I'm kind of again. I think I had it as a tie actually. Zadina and um, Heronic. Tell me what you guys think in Detroit. What do you got there? Send Stutzla all day. Stutzla, I just, this kid is just something else. On a stick, he's a magician on a stick. Every year he's just going to get better and better and better. Um, I will say that I, 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 I mean, Kachuk is always going to be there. He's another guy that just gets better and better and better every year. Brady Kachuk could just beast it next year. Like, what did he get? 36 points in 56 games. Both of those guys could be point of game players next year, so you could pick them both. And of course, Kachuk, oh, I would kill to have that guy on my team. You want to talk about guys that you can win a cup with? Definitely. And Stutzla, too. They both play with that killer fire in their eyes. You just love to watch as a fan, as a coach, or period. They play the right way. Love them both. Call it a tie, I guess. I just, I love Kachuk. I love both of the Kachuks. My, fa my favorite players in the league. And Sabres, Darlene. I'm taking Darlene here. I think Darlene now has got a, finally got a coach that knows how to uh, motivate and make you feel good about yourself, confidence. There's a couple guys here that I think did really well in the second half. Casey Middlestat. I'm rooting for you, dude. It's just terrible what's happened in your career with Buffalo right now. I could see him having an enormous year next year getting a couple dollars in his pocket. Uh, Tage Thompson as well also had a great second half. But I think Darlene's going to be very, very good next year. I think he's had his defensive analytics have not been great, but his development has been horrible. And I just have a feeling that Granado's going to help him out big time next year. He's going to have the best year of his career. And people are going to be talking about Rasmus Darlene another couple of years about another Norse. Not another one about the Norris. I do believe that. I love them. All right. Holy crap, did I go a long time here. That's my full 42. Have a great day, everybody. Okay, bye.